Hi there and welcome to another episode of PilotClimb.com In today's video we are going to talk about the fuel consideration that you should make before every approach Okay, so as you can see we are cruising at flight level 350 and we are in bound Jilsu, our top of descent guys As you can see in there is approximately 140 miles away, in fact if you look here in the FMC We've got 142 nautical miles from the top to the top of the descent. Okay, we're gonna reach the top of the descent at 80.29, so it's going to be 90 minutes. And in today's video, we are going to talk about what you should consider regarding the fuel before starting the approach. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1, rotate. Hi there, my name is Gabriel and I help you to become a better pilot. If you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video. If you don't want to miss the next content, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, too much talking, let's go and let's talk about some fuel considerations that you should make before every approach. Why it is important to make the fuel considerations before every approach is because planning ahead is what you should do. You should never find yourself in a situation and then plan what is the next course of action, okay? If you plan ahead, if you plan before, your plan B, plan C, you're gonna be, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to face the situation. And what we are going to do in today's video is what is the fuel that we need to land and what, are, what is the fuel that we need to divert, okay? What we're gonna do, we're gonna check the flight plan, in this case it's a little flight plan from SimBrief, and we're gonna discuss what is our alternate fuel, why it is important to know what is our alternate fuel, what is our final reserve fuel, and what it, uh, why it is important to know that, and how much time of holding time we've got before actually taking the decision whether to continue to our destination on go or go to our alternate okay because at the end it's really what you need to know okay when you should start to fly to your alternate aerodrome because you don't want to hold on top of your uh, uh, destination and then burn your alternate fuel because then if something happens you cannot go to the alternate fuel however there are some conditions where you can actually uh, uh, choose your destination as an alternate as well it can burn as well the alternate fuel to land in your destination aerodrome but that's another type and it's another topic for a different video okay so let's say now we are cruising for 350 we are approaching the top of the sand so let's discuss some fuel considerations okay so guys this is the uh, as you can see here on the top left this is the lead of flight plane okay so if i zoom out this is the first page of the lead of flight plane okay where you've got all the information all the information regarding weights, regarding some uh, performances and weather and weather informations. But the one of the most important uh, thing to consider is the plant fuel. Okay, the fuel figures. Why? Because we've got you've got all the fuel information that is required to perform the flight in a safe manner. Okay, so. We've got the trip, the contingency, guys, and I made separate videos where I talked about all of these uh, fuel uh, figures. However, in today's video, we are going to see what is our fuel for this uh, approach and this landing, okay? So this is our flight, okay? This is a flight from Bologna to Ibiza, and what is it saying in here? If you see in here, it says fuel, and if you go in here, it says alternate, then airport Barcelona, fuel 1948, time 45. What does it mean? Is that for this flight, our alternate is going to be Barcelona, and the fuel to reach Barcelona from our from the moment that we execute the go round is approximately 2,000 kilograms, and it's gonna be a time of 45 minutes of flight. Okay. Why it is important is because this is the fuel that we need to go to Barcelona in, in case we something happen during uh, before landing in our destination, which is a bit. Okay. Then we've got the final reserve fuel, guys, which is approximately 1,100 kilograms, which is which equals okay 30 minutes of flight time at an A8 at a height above your alternate aerodrome of. 1500 feet so what does it mean let's say you arrive at minima you don't see the runway you choose to go around because you don't see the runway okay so what will happen is that you're gonna burn approximately 2000 kilograms to reach your uh, your alternate but once you reach your alternate that you you won't reach your altitude your sorry your alternate aerodrome with zero fuel but you will reach the alternate with at least the final reserve fuel which is approximately 1100 and why is the final reserve fuel important? It's because sometimes what you can imagine, if there is bad weather, it's bad weather for everybody. So some people, they will divert the same as you. And normally, especially if you fly for a big operator, we all use the same alternate, okay? 
that's why when there is bad weather we load extra fuel in order to make sure we, that we never burn the final reserve fuel it is extremely important okay so what we have to think about so now we are flying to Ibiza if everything is fine we're just gonna land in Ibiza without any problem so but how much fuel do we need in order to divert to Ibiza let's say sorry to Barcelona let's say you arrive over Ibiza and they say uh, holding okay there are holding because the Ibiza there is a lot of traffic okay so when you can actually start thinking about to go to Barcelona instead of landing to Ibiza because you're not gonna spend all day holding over Ibiza because you don't have the fuel right so if you do the sum of these two the alternate and final reserve this will give you your reserve fuel so there is the fuel that you need okay is the number that you need to read before uh, the minimum number that you need to fly to your alternate aerodrome which is Barcelona okay so if you go down here we've got FMC e info says final reserve plus alternate fuel is 3100 kilograms okay so your alternate fuel okay so as we said before the fuel that you need to fly from your missile approach all the way down to Barcelona and then to fly 30 minutes of 1500 feet uh, height above the alternate aerodrome equals 3100 kilograms in fact if you come in here on the performance part in here it says reserve 3100 okay so if you are reaching the 3100 kilograms of fuel we start to take a decision we start to need to take a decision okay but as you can see if you take the decision now that you are cruising and you are comfortable you will know exactly when you have to divert okay you don't you would never take these decisions when you are immersed in the situation this is because this is so important to plan ahead okay so we know that minimum fuel to divert to Barcelona is 3,100, okay? And the question is, with how much fuel we gonna arrive in uh, Ibiza, okay? Because if you arrive in, at Ibiza with 3,200 kilograms, we know exactly that if something happens, we need to go straight to Barcelona. However, that's very rare. Normally, you will land, you arrive, you approach your destination with extra fuel, okay? In this case, if I press, if I press progress page, in here you can actually see with how much fuel we're gonna land we're gonna arrive in, in uh, ibiza and we're gonna arrive in ibiza with five tons let's call it okay 5.1 tons okay so as you can see we've got two thousand kilograms extra on the arrival in uh, uh, ibiza okay so because we said the minimum fuel to divert to barcelona is 3100 however we're gonna reach ibiza with 5100 kilograms which is approximately 2000 kilograms more okay so but guys again it is very important to think about fuel is nothing okay so if i say if i tell you uh, we're gonna arrive in barcelona with 3000 4000 kilograms more okay who cares about the kilograms we want to know how much time that fuel will buy us because everything is relative because it all depends on the fuel consumption of your aircraft okay because if your aircraft is burning 1000 kilograms per hour that means that you're gonna arrive in Ibiza with a uh, 2000 kilograms extra means two hours extra but if your aircraft is burning two kilograms per hour that means that you're gonna arrive there with only one hour of extra not only but one hour. so uh, what i want to make sure is that everything is relative because it's, it changes depending on the fuel consumption of the aircraft Okay, so it is very important to know your fuel consumption. In the case of the Boeing 737, we use 2,400 kilograms per hour as a fuel consumption. In fact, if I click in here, engine, okay, and I, I come in here down there, you can see the fuel flow is 1,300 for the engine number one, 1,300 for the engine number two. So this is approximately 2,600 kilograms per hour total. Okay, this is what is the 737 of the X-Plane 11 is burning at the moment. Okay, so what does it mean? If it means that if you're arriving in Ibiza with 5.1 tons and we need to divert minimum 3,100, that means that we've got 2,000 kilograms extra. Okay, and those 2,000 kilograms extra with a fuel flow of 2,600 kilograms per hour, that's gonna buy us around 40 minutes. Okay, so in order to be very conservative, you can say, okay, you know what, let's, let's call it half an hour, okay? So if the controller will tell us that our delay is going to be 50 minutes, one hour, we have, we know that we're going to be in trouble because we want to divert, okay? We, we want to divert. One of uh, what I learned throughout my experience and career is that sometimes the delay, they get better, okay? When they tell you 50 minutes, they might go down then, okay? Because sometimes it's just a forecast from the air traffic controller, okay? So 
what I suggest is never go direct to the, direct to your uh, alternate. Just all there, and you know, and hope for the and hope for the situation to get better. Then, if you see the situation is not getting better, and you are reaching your target fuel for your minimum fuel for the diversion, then divert. Okay, but don't go straight to your alternate. Okay, because it's it's better to try to land at your destination anyway because you've got the fuel to try. Okay, you wanna try. Okay, because that will make the 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 operations a lot smoother. Right. So now. Another suggestion that I can give it to you is that even though you minimum fuel to divert 3100, never divert with the minimum fuel because you're not gonna be the only one diverting around. So, in a real life situation, I would divert with 3500, okay? So, having 400 grams extra. So, if I see that I'm reaching the 3500 kilograms and I'm still holding over Ibiza, I'm gonna start asking vectors for uh, to divert, okay? Or even more, 3, depending on the severity of the situation. Then it's a pilot judgment, okay? It's, uh, it's really experience and, and, and all these things. You can you have to take into consideration as well how big is the airport that you are diverting to. In this case, it's Barcelona, so we expect that our alternate is gonna have a lot of parking stands, which is great, okay? So there will be space. However, there is a downside that <laughs> it's gonna be busy okay because it's already busy normally then you're gonna have all that traffic diverting to Barcelona so it's gonna be busy however one of the biggest problems is the parking stand in my experience I diverted in some airport that were small and then soon after I landed they were not able to accept any other flights because they were full okay so these are all the considerations that you should take before actually taking the decision okay but normally check your reserve fuel check with how much fuel you're gonna land at your destination and make sure you have a, a rough number in your head before uh, that that you will respect in case you get you you approach that number before the vert okay so we said just to recap very quickly in this case our uh, reserve fuel which is alternate plus final reserve okay our reserve fuel is 3100 we're gonna land in um, Ibiza with five tons so it's approximately 2000 extra our fuel flow as you can see here, FF fuel flow is 2,600 kilograms per hour. We can take that, okay? That's gonna give us approximately 40 minutes of extra fuel, okay? So we know that we can hold over a bit around with around 40 minutes of time, okay? I will call you. I will call it half an hour, and then I will basically assess the situation once we uh, the half an hour is elapsed, okay? So guys, this flight is as as I said is a flight from. Bologna to Ibiza and if I go like that we can actually see outside it's almost uh, uh, night time and we have fog there because I'm testing the X-Plane 11 Autoland capabilities okay so the aircraft uh, the Autoland feature of the 77 okay in this X-Plane 11 simulator all right guys so I hope now it's clear for you a little bit better what consideration you should make before starting an approach regarding the fuel, the alternate fuel, the reserve fuel, the final reserve and so on. If you have any question, leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.